5.30 in time for the business meeting of the Douglas County Commission for December 16th. Give me a minute, I forgot to pull up my magic, well, they're not magic, my notes regarding our meetings during this time of Zoom. Google Thanks for your patience. My internet thanks you for your patience. Okay, good evening and welcome to the December 16th Douglas County Board of County Commissioners business meeting. We wanna welcome any of you who are at the courthouse or joining us online. I just wanna pass a bit of information regarding how we run our meetings on Zooms during this time of social distancing. If visual aids are used during the meeting, the presenter will share the screen with the call. Participants will not be able to view them without a computer, or smartphone, or tablet. All participants will be entered into the meeting with their audio muted. Meaning the commission and the public will not be able to hear you. Presenters will be unmuted when their agenda item comes up. We ask that all online presenters use good conference call etiquette and mute their line when not speaking and introduce themselves each time they speak. If you have a public comment on an agenda item or under a regular public comment, please use the raise your hand function on Zoom. Staff will call on you and unmute you. We ask that speakers give their name and address for the minutes. The county reserves the right to shut off the microphone and remove any speaker from the meeting if they are vulgar, rude, or inappropriate. Chat function has been disabled and a recording of this meeting will be available on our website after each meeting. Our agenda tonight has a consent agenda, which has seven items on it, a regular agenda with three items. We have some appointments this evening, general public comment, and then we'll wrap up with Commissioner or Administrator Miscellaneous. Commissioners, is there any item on the consent agenda that you would like to have removed for discussion? I don't have anything. None from me. Is there any member of the public who would remind to remove an, an agenda item that's on our consent agenda? I don't have anyone here at the courthouse for that. Thank you. Doesn't look like anybody online either. So I take a motion to approve items one through seven on our consent agenda. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Passes 3 0. Now move on to our first regular agenda item, which is a planning department item to consider rezoning 67 Lone Star Lake properties from AG2 to LS. Commissioners, we'll go ahead and move Mary Miller over to for that item. Sorry, we had a last minute sort of change of prioritization on this to so that Mary oh, can- sorry. I thought, I thought it was a budget first, I'm sorry. Yeah, no worries. Mary's got to get to planning commission. So- oh, okay, sorry about that. A bit. Hi, Mary. Hi, good evening, Mary Miller, city county planner, and I will get my screen over. And this rezoning is actually 11 rezoning applications in one. It is for all 67 small lot properties located along Lone Star Lake. To rezone them from Ag 2 Transitional Agriculture to LS, the Lone Star Lake Lot Residential District. Uh, most of these small lots were created in 1939. Uh, we had a few others that were created later, but they were all created before the adoption of zoning in Douglas County. So once zoning was adopted, these small lots all became non-conforming. And this rezoning is intended to remove that non-conforming status. Uh, the properties are highlighted in green. They're on the west side of Lone Star Lake and on the east side of that western leg. <clears throat> as I said, there's 11 separate zoning applications because the properties, as you can see, are not all contiguous. Uh, we have little clusters and then there's a um, Lone Star Park property in between. This is a copy of the Lone Star Park drainage area and property map, which is um, approved in 1939 by the county engineer and the county attorney. It was not an official map, but it did create these small vested parcels. Other parcels were created with the, um, remember the name of this plat, Woodfield Country Estates plat, 
And then there were a few vested parcels that were just created prior to zoning. This is a close up of the properties. These are very small, these are urban sized properties. They're about, most of them are about 50 feet by 100 foot or about 5,000 square feet. Um, these were zoned A when zoning was adopted in 1966. The zoning classification converted to Ag 2 with the 2020 adoption of the revised zoning regulations. And the LS district was designed specifically with the revised regulations to create a zoning district so these lots would be conforming. And the county zoning and code staff developed this district based on um, their work with these lots. Anytime a property wanted to redevelop or do an addition or even a significant improvement to their structures, they would need to request a variance on the Board of Zoning Appeals. And so the um, dimensional standards were revised. <clears throat> In Ag 2, you need a minimum of 10 acres. In LS, you need a minimum of 1,600 square feet. And the setbacks were all revised as well to remove the non-conforming status of the lots and of the structures. Uh, in addition, the LS district has a more limited range of uses, and the uses permitted in this district were evaluated uh, based on the small lots and the dense development. Even though staff initiated or requested the initiation of this rezoning and we're processing it, uh, the property owners were included. Uh, zoning and code staff held a Lone Star Lake community meeting in May of 2018 to discuss the standards for the district. Uh, they had a determined that there'd be a comment period to May 25th, but at the meeting that was extended to June 25th, 2018, and that um, the zoning district was uh, created based on this work. Property owners were notified by mail of plans to initiate the rezoning at the August 28, 2020 Planning Commission and re received several calls and questions regarding that. Um, we held a community Zoom meeting on October 1st of 2020 to discuss the rezoning and to answer property owners' questions. Um, their principal questions, probably the number one question was, will this rezoning affect my taxes? And so Stephen Miles, the county appraiser, attended the meeting and answered those questions. And this meeting was recorded and made available online for those neighbors and property owners who couldn't attend. And, um, and the county appraiser indicated that it isn't your zoning that affects your taxes, it's primarily your use. And uh, property owners were then notified by mail of uh, the November 18th, 2020 Planning Commission consideration of the rezoning request. And then since then, I've been communicating with the, one of their board members and let them know the date of the county commission meeting. I'll just go through some of the golden factors kind of briefly. Uh, one of the things we always look at is what is the zoning and the land use. On the graphic on the top left, the lettered areas are the different zoning applications for the Lone Star Lake properties. These are all currently zoned Ag 2. Uh, in yellow and other Ag 2 zone properties in the area are also shown in yellow. The blue or purple area is all Ag 1. And we'll see the development of the area on the graphic to the right. Um, we have Lone Star Lake and it's a wooded border around Lone Star Lake and these properties are all nestled in that wooded border. So the lake is one of the principal factors defining the character of this area. Other land uses besides this recreational property is woodland, stream, corridors and agriculture, and then there are scattered residences throughout the area. So the zoning and the land use, the land use is already existing, but it would be compatible with the existing zoning and land uses in the area. And we always look at the character of the area, and this shows the character of within about a mile of the subject properties. Uh, we have a, a good transportation network through the area, a Lone Star Lake and the wooded stream corridors leading to and away from it are a major factor of the area agriculture, and as I mentioned, rural residences also make up the character. Um, this rezoning would maintain the character as these small lots have been in this uh, configuration since 1939 and are a historical feature of Douglas County. So it would just be a way of maintaining and even enhancing the character of this area. Uh, we look for whether or not the zoning is compliant with recommendations in the comprehensive plan. In the introduction, Plan 2040 notes that the vision is to create and maintain preservation and celebration of our rich history, along with new places with unique character. And this Lone Star Lake community is a kind of a historical feature. And so this would assist in preserving that feature. Um, in growth and development, it um, recommends we revise residential development regulations to better conserve and enhance the rural character of Douglas County. 
And so that was the creation of this new district specifically for this area. And so this new district and the rezoning to this district we feel is in compliance with the comprehensive plan. Uh, we look at other environmental, uh, or I'm sorry, other review criteria. One is the impact on environmentally sensitive lands. Um, the rezoning should have no impact as the property is already subdivided and most of them are already developed. So it should be no change there. Uh, there should be no detrimental effect as the amount of uses that are permitted will now be less than would be permitted under the Ag 2 zoning. This property is not very suitable for development under the current zoning. There, that allows, Ag 2 allows quite a few uses that just would not be even feasible on these small lots, but it is well suited to the uses that are permitted in the LS or Lone Star Lake lot residential district. Um, the property has not been vacant. Uh, it did get platted in the 1930s and it appears from our historical aerials that in early 1960s, it began being developed, um, but it has, it's not vacant. Um, as there would be no detrimental impacts from this rezoning, uh, we see no gain to be had from the denial of the application. And there is no area plan for this area. The Planning Commission considered this application at their November 18th meeting and voted unanimously to forward the rezonings to the Board of County Commissioners with a recommendation for approval. And uh, we don't have an applicant, but I'll be happy to answer any questions if you have any. Thank you, Mary, appreciate it. Commissioners, any questions for Mary? I don't have any. None for me. None for me. Let's open it up for the public and see if they have any public comment on this. Any member of the public there at the courthouse want to speak on this item, sir? Um, no, but I do have some comments from uh, staff when we're done with public comment. Thank you. Um, any uh, buddy online want to provide public comment on this item? Not seeing any. All right, Sarah, I will. Turn it over to you. Well, just really briefly, commissioners, as, as Mary mentioned in her comments, you know, we've been doing a lot of work around land use issues associated with Lone Star Lake for the last several years. It fell, it fell off the plate and is back on the plate. I, I do want to mention that at our January 6th commission meeting, uh, you will see a, um, a county code uh, plan revision from public works and zoning and codes related to uh, docks and structures in uh, inside the ca county property of um, around Lone Star Lake. So that last piece of the puzzle will be coming forward to the commission at that January meeting. Thank you, Sarah. Any comments, motions? Sarah, I think well, while we're considering motions here, I think We've had a lot of variances that every time we have a property around Lone Star that we have to deal with. So I think this is progress. Um, Watch the um, planning commission meeting on this one. I'm sure the other commissioners did as well. And know that we had a few folks there who are still getting information. And I think it's encouraging. I just want to thank Mary for all the public outreach they did to let those neighbors know um, what this means. This is really more of a um, I guess clerical might be the right word, but that isn't quite it. <laughs> you know, that just sort of cleans things up here and will make them easier down the road. Well, I'd, I'd also like to thank Mary uh, for all your, your work on this. I appreciate it. I said, I prefer the term housekeeping. Um, yeah. This is something that we need to get documented in a different manner and we'll make ourselves more efficient in the future. Much better word. Thank you, Sarah. Well, I'm happy to make the motion, um, commissioners, to rezone 67 Lone Star Lake properties. Um, and I guess we're going to have to do all, do we have to do all those numbers there, Mary? Probably so, yes. You could just give the range that, you know, that I had on my slide, just the first and the last one might save you some time. Oh, I think we've got the time. Um, I'm going to make a motion to approve the rezoning of Z20-00369, Z20-00370, Z20-00371, Z20-00372, Z20-00373, 
0374, 020, 00375, 0, Z20, 00376, Z20, 00377, and Z20, 00378-67 properties located near our long loan star from AG2 district to LS based on the finding of facts in the staff report. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you, Mary. Good luck at the Planning Commission. Our next agenda item is uh, a 2020 amended county public bud uh, budget hearing and adoption of the amended budget, Sarah. Uh, thank you, commissioners. Um, Kemi Owens, our budget manager is here as well. Uh, this is our traditional year end budget amendment uh, that we do each year um, as a part of the annual budget process. The commissioners are, you know, what the commissioners do each year is that we reestimate the current year budget when we're planning for the next year's budget. And this amendment basically just um, codifies that what's done at re-estimate in, in July and makes it official in terms of our state documentation. So anything, you know, in terms of the public and, the, and questions about what happens with that, uh, you know, that process is largely worked out in, in June and July when we, when the commissioners set their budget for the next year, we re-estimate the current year. So this is in accordance with that. I would say the only other major change in addition to that, if you'll see in the materials would be the grants fund. Um, uh, was significant, we re-estimated that uh, in, uh, out, uh, we re-estimated re that to account for the uh, CARES Act funding that Douglas County received from the state of Kansas. Um, we can amend our budget for unanticipated revenues. And if there was ever a definition of unanticipated revenues, it is uh, the County CARES Act funding that we received this year. So that has been noted for in our budget amendment as well. Um, as we close out the fiscal year, uh, we will be coming back to the commissioners with a list of transfers uh, that we do as we prepare for our year end process. And we do that inside of January, which is the 13th month of, of the fiscal year. Uh, uh, in accordance with what is set forward here in the budget amendment. And uh, uh, Cammie and I stand for any questions you might have on the budget amendment. Any questions, commissioners? I don't have any. I don't have any, let's open it up for public comment. Anyone there at the courthouse like to provide public comment on this, Sarah? We don't have anyone. Anyone online? Nope. Seeing any, thank you. Uh, commissioners open to comments or motions. So Cammy, you're ready to wrap this up and start next year's, right? Of course. <laughs> yeah. Thank you as always for all the work you do on the budget, Cammy. Thank you. And Cammie and Sarah, I'm hearing rumors of another stimulus package coming out of DC today, which I can only imagine what that will put on us um, as it comes down the line. So, but we desperately need those dollars, that's for sure, as our CARES Act money runs out December 31st. So I wanna encourage, if any federal official is listening to please pass another CARES Act, so. Mm -hmm. And I would say that uh, I was on a call with uh, the Unified Command's Economic Impacts Branch earlier today and and uh, gave sort of an update on where we we're at in terms of CARES funding. And uh, they, there was a lot of uh, positive comments that were passed along to Douglas County for our work in the CARES Act process as we move through here. And um, uh, we, we stand ready to assist the community in any way possible moving forward. Thanks, Sarah. Are you ready for a motion, Patrick? Yes, please. Okay, I would move that we um, cons that we adopt the 2020 amended county budget. Second. 
Moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Passes 3-0. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Cammie. Our third item is an extension of the law enforcement pedestrian and traffic study. And I see Mike Brower is here. Commissioners, while Mike's joining us, um, this really item is for informational purposes only, and I'll have Mike go into some detail about this, but uh, we wanted to bring it to the commission's attention um, you know, as an update on, on the study and, um, but, um, and just answer any questions you might have. Mike. Uh, good evening, commissioners. Uh, just a uh, um, for just for public purposes, I'll kind of go over the uh, memo that was submitted to you. Um, we um, the con our pedestrian and traffic stop study. Um, our contract actually ran through September of this year. It provides for two three month extensions for a total of six months, um, and we, um, in conversation with Northeastern University and the other law enforcement agencies, um, we've been realizing all year that the number of uh, co police contacts in the community had decreased significantly because of COVID. Um, you may have seen some presentations where that graphic was shown. And um, so, as you may remember, we need to have a minimum number of um, minority contacts in order for the study to have enough data to be considered a valid a statistical study. And so we haven't reached that point. Um, Northeastern is confident that we will need an, a, the additional six months. Um, so instead of doing one three month period at a time, we're going to go ahead and agree with them to extend for six months. Um, the cost for this extension um, is divided up among the partner agencies, um, but the direct cost to the county would be uh, $21,043.74. Um, it's a lot of money. Um, we, you know, I, I had a long conversation with Lawrence Police Department. They, um, they kind of cringe at the dollar amount as well. Um, but we, you know, strongly feel that this is a valuable study and to end the study before we have the opportunity to um, glean some um, re, uh, results that we know are, are reliable and to um, get the recommendations from Northeastern just um, doesn't seem like the right thing to do. So all partners would like to continue the study. And um, so I, I wanted to bring that to your attention. Um, as Sarah said, it, um, the contract allows for this um, just with written notice. Um, however, I may be coming back to you next year with the other law enforcement agencies and requesting an addendum to the contract for the further extension if we haven't reached those minimum number of contacts. And uh, I've talked to uh, Baldwin City, uh, Eudora, and the uh, Lawrence Police Department and, and uh, University of Kansas Public Safety, and they all agree in, with extending the contract. Mike, it's Patrick Kelly. Is there any is there any concern among the researchers that the data we'll get, even with an extended contract, will be flawed in some way, be, just because of the pandemic? I mean, do we still feel like we'll get good data from this? We we, we we've taught we've asked that question, um, uh, Commissioner, and um, so on one hand, yeah, the the, the data will be impacted by, um, by the pandemic. Um, depending on how you look at that from a research analysis standpoint, that's a, a, a very interesting thing and a, and a thing that could be of some value to us um, um, from the standpoint that it's um, contacts are way down. Um, in other words, law enforcement isn't uh, um, experiencing their jobs as normal. Um, that would be a negative impact of this. Um, but still, we will reach a minimum number of contacts that we had planned to. It's just going to take longer to do that. So that's a very circular answer, I guess. <laughs> uh, 
Um, one thing we have talked about commissioners um, with all of our partners, and, and of course we're waiting for um, um, new leadership to come on board, but we have the ability to continue to collect this data um, and uh, do our own analysis of that data uh, moving into the future once the study uh, concludes. Um, all partners have expressed an interest in doing that, and that would uh, um, allow us to follow up on recommendations and, and continue to, uh, to do this work. Commissioners, any questions for Mike? I don't have any. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, appreciate it. We're not voting on this one, but we'll check for public comment real quick. Sarah, anyone at the courthouse for public comment? I don't have anyone for public comment. I don't think we have anyone online for public comment, Jill. Nope. All right. Thank you, Mike. We'll uh, move on. Uh, the next one, next item is appointments, and we have uh, some CJCC recommended appointments. Mike, it's probably you again, if you have anything to share with us on this. Yes, how convenient is that? I need to go back to back. Um, so we have a few appointments that are expiring the end of January for the Criminal Justice Coordinating Council according to our bylaws. And I've reached out to um, the appropriate parties to, uh, to, to get the appointments uh, to or recommendations to you so that you're able to make those appointments. Um, the two that I have tonight are um, Reentry Director Carrie Nice has nominated Anthony Sanchez, who has been serving on the council as a person with lived experience um, to serve another year. He serves one year terms. And Anthony has um, um, stated that he would like to continue to serve. In addition, he serves on the um, alternatives to incarceration Alternatives to Incarceration Research Workgroup and has been contributing to that. Um, and he is helping us work on um, putting together a map of the decision points of the Douglas County criminal justice system um, because he can bring that lived experience uh, perspective to that. The uh, second appointment that I have for you is um, Professor Charles Epp of the University of Kansas who um, has expertise in the intersection of race and criminal justice. Um, Professor Epp um, has been real valuable to us in putting together the law enforcement contact study. He also serves on the racial and ethnic disparities work group um, and has been a, a great resource there. Uh, Professor Epp um, would like to continue with the work group or with the council um, and his appointment is for two years. And I, I'd just like to add, um, you know, when we redid the the bylaws, I guess it was about a year ago, a little over a year ago, one of the um, positions we brought on was the lived experience. And and um, Anthony Sanchez has been a, a real um, valuable addition in that role. So I'm glad to see that he's interested in um, continuing. And then um, Professor App. You know, he's been on the CJCC since the very beginning. Um, so he, he not only brings um, value and his experience um, from outside to the position, but he's also very knowledgeable on the work that's been done by the CJCC. And uh, so I'm, I'm also glad to hear that he wants to, to continue. Commissioner DeRusso, would you like to make those nominations? I would love to. Does this need to be two separate nominations, Sarah? Or... I mean, I don't care. I just want to make sure I do it right. <laughs> uh, yeah, generally, uh, we would probably make each nomination separate. OK. Um, I move to reappoint uh, Chuck up to the expert position for a two-year term expiring 131-23. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 And 
motion to reappoint Anthony Sanchez to the lived experience position for a one year term to expire 131 2022. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Thanks, Mike. Mike. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, commissioners. There's no other appointments, commissioners. Quick check. Um, ah, Commissioner uh -huh. Yeah. Um, so I'd like us uh, to consider appointing Jamie Kanabi to the um, Food Policy Council. She's, um, she and her husband are agricultural producers of multiple generations. And they're both uh, traditional farmers as well as ranchers. And Jamie operates her own farmer's uh, uh, market. So kind of uh, she, she's very interested in and participates in the local food. Uh, work as well. So she's really well-rounded. She's very interested in this work and is already actually pretty involved. So I move that we approve, uh, that we appoint Jamie Kanabi to a full term on the Food Policy Council. Second. Excellent. Thanks for your work on finding that person. Commissioner Thoman, all those in favor say aye. 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 Passes 3-0. Any other appointments? Okay, turn it over to Sarah for miscellaneous items. Uh, maybe we should do general public comment first, just to make sure. <laughs> that uh, yes, thank you, yes. General public comment. Uh, is there anyone there at the courthouse who would like to provide general public comment? We don't have anyone here. Anyone online who would like to provide general public comment? No. Okay, now let's move on to miscellaneous items and we'll start with Sarah. Thank you, commissioners. Um, in your packet, uh, just some quick updates. Um, Friday, uh, Governor Kelly is hosting a gover uh, COVID conference call update for elected officials. Uh, if you don't have that information and you want it to uh, call in, make sure we can get it for you, but I just want to pass that along. And then um, as an annual tradition uh, for Douglas County commissioners in your packet is the snow and ice manual from public works. Um, it is quite lengthy, um, but the commission receives it every year. And so we've included it in your packet uh, for your review um, and commissioners. That's all I have tonight. And I guess this is our last meeting. So I would of the calendar year. So happy holidays. Thank you, Sarah. Commissioners, any miscellaneous items? No. No. Happy no. holidays. Happy holidays. Sarah, I hope you and your staff take a few days off. You've worked hard this year. Um, yeah, you deserve it <laughs> for sure. <laughs> yeah. Here's, here's to 2021 and what it may bring. <laughs> Thank you, commissioners. Yeah, it's it's been an, it definitely been um, a full year, um, and so uh, we don't have any other meetings for this year. We do have a meeting planned for January sixth, uh, so we'll be uh, in we'll be planning that agenda as we after the holidays. Yeah, enjoy. Right. And as Commissioner Kelly said, please try to maybe take some time and catch your breath and. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I think, well, it's just as you, I think Sarah and I are dying to know the name of your cat, Nancy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, kitty pie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very she, thank you. Start, the cat seemed very interested in the uh, upgraded zoning at Lone Star Lake. So it was, it was you know, she's uh, she's a public servant at heart. You know, <laughs> it's hard to hard to keep her keep her back. <laughs> I love it. Sorry, I had to ask. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for your indulgence. I sometimes I forget she's there and then I see her in the screen. But I almost asked her for public comment. You know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Aw, thank you. A little bit of levity. Nice. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Well, um, 
I, I do think we should take a moment and celebrate today. We had our first vaccines arrive in Douglas County today. And so that's very exciting. Um, yeah, Sarah, do you have any updates for us on that? I know there was some last minute meetings today. Uh, yes, commissioners. And I think there'll be a few more as we move forward. Um, you know, uh, I'm really proud of the work that our unified command partners have done to put together a plan for vaccination. Um, involving a number of our community partners and how this moves forward. I think it's important to note that this first phase is really about healthcare workers and um, essential personnel uh, in first responders. So uh, they'll be preparing for, for that to happen, you know, started today at LMH and I think will continue to happen over the next week. As we, as more rounds are released, there'll be different um, priorities put forward in terms of who receives those. Um, so I, I do anticipate like all things COVID, we need to be flexible and adaptable um, in terms of how we approach this. Um, it, it's, it's uh, you know, there, it's, it's, there's just, there's, we're gonna need some flexibility as it moves forward from the state um, in terms of how it comes down here to local units. Well, there's maybe a light at the end of the tunnel, so that's good to see, and and that's exciting. And I just I don't want anyone to think that we're out of the woods yet, though. Um, as we head into holidays, we just need to do our best to keep practicing those healthy behaviors. So I know that it seems like it goes without saying, but but we seem we need to say it over and over again. And I hope people are listening. So anything else, commissioners, before we adjourn? All right. Just With thanks. That. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to you guys for, I mean, as being our last meeting of 2020, I mean, none of us had any idea what this year was going to be. Um, I mean, being separated like this and not being able to meet in person and the challenges that, that presents along with everything else and the, just the efforts you have made for our community members. Um, I just can't say enough, so thank you. Well said, Commissioner Jerusalem. With that, we will adjourn our last meeting of 2020. County Commission adjourned. Bye. <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.